Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will understand about adaptive multi-factor authentication. I will give you a brief overview of adaptive multi-factor authentication and how it works. What is the difference between multi-factor authentication? The benefit, what it offers. I will also provide you the steps that organizations can take to implement adaptive multi-factor authentication with the real-world examples of the organizations that have successfully implemented adaptive multi-factor authentication. So let's get started. Before we get into the actual topic of adaptive multi-factor authentication, let's quickly understand what multi-factor authentication is and how it works. As you can see over here, Multi-factor authentication is a security method that uses two or more factors to confirm a user's identity to access any kind of resources such as applications, online account, etc. So that it requires minimum two factors or more than two factors to get access of the resource rather than just a user ID and password. As you can see in this uh, diagram where the uh, user is asked to provide the username and password as a first factor and the OTP uh, in this case the OTP is asked as a second factor and the fingerprint biometric as the third factor right. So um, user ID password, then PIN, and then fingerprints. There are several popular multi-factor authentication methods. Uh, one of the uh, factor is knowledge factor, means something the user knows, such as the password, right? Second is the position factor, something the user has, right? And like the smart card or so. And the next uh, is the inherent factor, which says something the user is, user himself is, such as fingerprint or facial recognition or retina scanning, right? What the user is. Uh, next one is uh, time-based OTP. That's also popularly called TOTP. It generates a series of numbers through QR code scanning. One of the example is Google Authenticator. So that QR code it generates uh, and through the QR code, it, uh, it it generates the sequence of the series of the numbers. So this is what actually I have mentioned over here. So one of the best example is Google Authenticator. Next one is push best 2FA. That uh, push authentication sends notifications. So basically it sends a notification through over the network. So it requires basically uh, uh, your mobile should have the network connectivity to the uh, end server. Uh, next is very much uh, popular is the secret question. Um, so uh, you can set the questions that users can answer to verify their identity. Now that we understand multi-factor authentication, let's move on to the adaptive multi-factor authentication, also known as risk-based authentication system. Adaptive multi-factor authentication is a security system that uses machine learning algorithm to analyze various factors such as user's behavior, their location, device information, and login history to determine the level of risk and adjust the authentication requirements accordingly. As I mentioned, it's a machine learning algorithm it uses to analyze behavior, location, the uh, device what the user using and the login history to determine the behavior of the user and to risk a score of the user. This means that the system can automatically prompt users to provide additional form of identification if the risk level is way high or it can allow users to bypass certain authentication methods if the risk level is low. Adaptive authentication takes advantage of real-time analytics to get a complete picture of the circumstances surrounding each login. 
when a user tries to sign in, a adaptive authentication system looks at things like device verification. So these are the different uh, methods what adaptive multi-factor authentication offers. One is the device verification. Is means is the user using their personal laptop instead of using a company issued laptop. So this checks if the user is using a trusted device. Okay. So if you are using a personal laptop, it will be prompting you that okay, this device is not trusted if you are inside the office. Second one is location verification means, so this is the location verification means, is the user trying to access this system using a public network rather than the company's network? Or is the user in another time zone? So all these checks are being performed in the location based uh, checks during that location check. So uh, the network, what it uses, the device recognition for MFA, adaptive authentication com combines these data points with the historical or contextual user data. Next one is IP address verification. The meaning of it is the employee connecting from a known IP. Okay. Or is it from another country? So all these IP related checks we perform in IP address based. Uh, verification. Let's understand how adaptive multi-factor authentication helps to increase the security of an organization system and resources by taking it more difficult for attackers to gain unauthorized access, right? So the whole objective is to you know, prevent the unauthorized access through the adaptive multi-factor authentication, right? It can also provide a more convenient user experience by only requiring additional authentication factor when necessary rather than every time a user logs in. So it is not necessarily to prompt whatever we have configured as a multi-factor authentication. So it is not necessary that the user will be prompted every time all those set off the same MFA. Uh, basis uh, on the uh, risk scoring, uh, the system itself will decide whether it is necessary to prompt additional factor or let the user get into the system. Okay, so this is what actually I am trying to highlight over here. Overall, adaptive multi factor authentication is an important tool for organizations that want to protect their systems and resources from unauthorized access as it can provide an additional layer of security beyond a traditional username and password. Now let's understand the difference between uh, standard multi-factor authentication and the adaptive multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is the present and adaptive authentication is the future. Having said, while MFA could help in tackling the security issues in the present scenario, enterprises looking at a long term perspective need to focus on integrating adaptive authentication. For instance, establishing the identity of a user through a step up OTP might not be the most ideal solution every time, as it is device dependent and anyone may access someone's mobile phone or hack into the email ID to get the authentication data, right? So that step up OTP might not be the ideal choice every time, right? Adaptive authentication takes user and behavior context a lot more closely compared to standard MFA, which is just another factor in the authentication process. It is based on a matrix of variables that provides a risk profile of a user. And based on this risk profile, the system generates additional authentication processes before the user is allowed for the access. While normal MFA could be part of the adaptive authentication process, it is much more intuitive and real time. With factors such as knowledge-based questions, geolocations, and identity assurance making the authentication system more robust. Okay, uh, next is dynamic and real-time security. You must have seen MFA, standard MFA follows a set, set of patterns 
and has certain processes to be followed. Whereas with regards to adaptive authentication, the end user is an integral part of the security, such as through SMS or email and knowledge based authentication helps in creating a dynamic security system, which is difficult to hack. The uh, move is towards behavioral aspect of users rather than device based simple password and OTP. It offers a new way of identity verification. Adaptive authentication helps in setting up additional identity verification through various channels including integrating hardware solutions such as biometrics. So this is very important to understand. As passwords are seen as the weakest link in any security system nowadays, backing it up with additional authentication, especially biometrics, ensure that only the authorized person is able to access the system. Let's find the benefit of adaptive multi-factor authentication. Adaptive multi-factor authentication provides several benefits that can help organizations to increase the security as you can see here. Increase the security of their systems and resources and improve the user experience. First, it increases the security by requiring multiple form of uh, authentication and continually assessing the risk level associated with a particular login attempt. Adaptive MFA makes it more difficult for attackers to gain unauthorized access to systems and resources. This helps to prevent data breaches, unauthorized access to sensitive information and other security incidents that can result from a single point of failure such as weak password. Preventing unauthorized access to sensitive information okay, and the data breaches as I mentioned over here. Second, it provides convenient user experience. Adaptive multi-factor authentication provides a more convenient user experience by only requiring additional authentication factors when necessary, based on the level of risk associated with the multiple login attempt. This helps to reduce the friction associated with the logging in while still maintaining a high level of security. So as and when required, if it is necessary, then only it will be prompting for an additional factor or it will allow a user to get into the system. Next is it prevents unauthorized access. Adaptive multi-factor authentication helps to prevent unauthorized access to systems and resources by requiring users to provide multiple forms of authentication and continually assessing the risk level associated with a particular login attempt. In summary, adaptive multi-factor authentication provides increased security, more convenient user experience and helps to prevent unauthorized access to system and resources by making it more difficult for attackers to gain access. Now let's take a closer look at adaptive multi-factor authentication implementation steps. Implementing Adaptive multi-factor authentication in any organizations involves several steps including determining the types of authentication factors to use, selecting the right tools and the technologies to support the solution and establishing the level of risk the organization is willing to tolerate. Uh, some of the steps are determine the types of authentication factor to use. Here organizations should decide which authentication factors they want to use in their adaptive MFA solution. These can include something the user knows like a password or PIN number, something the user has like a smart card or security token and something the user is like fingerprint or a facial recognition. It is important to choose authentication factors that are easy for users to access and use while also providing a high level of security. Second is select a right tool and technologies. Here organizations should choose the tools and technologies that will support their adaptive MFA solution such as identity and access management software and biometric authentication devices. They should also consider how this 
tools and technologies will integrate with their existing systems and infrastructure. So this is very much important. Uh, next is establishing the level of risk tolerance. Organizations should determine the level of risk they are willing to tolerate in their adaptive multi-factor authentication. This includes considering the potential consequences of security breaches such as loss of sensitive information or damage to reputation and the likelihood of such a breach occurring. Right? Based on this risk tolerance, organization can establish the level of security they need and determine which authentication factor they should use. Next is implement and test the solution. After selecting the right tools and technologies, what I have mentioned above over here, and determine the level of risk tolerance, organizations should implement their adaptive MFA solution and test it thoroughly to ensure that it works as intended and meet the security needs. This includes conducting regular security audits and updating the solution as needed to address any vulnerabilities. So uh, this is what we have covered in implement and test the solution thoroughly. Next is provide user training. Organization should provide training for their users on how to use the adaptive multi-factor authentication solution, including how to access the authentication factors and how to use the IAM software. So this is very much important. How to access the factor and how to use the IAM software. This will help ensuring that users are comfortable using the solution and understand the importance of using multiple forms of authentication. In summary, implementing adaptive multi-factor authentication in an organization involves several steps including determining the types of authentication factor to use, selecting the right tools and technology to support and establishing the level of risk the organization is willing to tolerate. Organization should also implement and test the solution thoroughly and provide user training to ensure a successful rollout. Let's find the real-world examples now. Here are few real-world examples of PSU banks in India that have successfully implemented adaptive multi-factor authentication. First one is State Bank of India. State Bank of India is the largest PSU bank has successfully implemented adaptive multi-factor authentication for its online banking platform. The bank uses a combination of password-based authentication and the one-time passcode, which is OTP, sent to the customer's mobile device to confirm the identity of, his, of its customers and prevent unauthorized access to their accounts. Okay. Uh, next is Bank of Baroda, uh, one of the largest PSU bank again in India, has implemented adaptive MFA to secure its online banking platform. The bank uh, uses a combination of password-based authentication and biometric authentication to confirm the identity of its customer, right, to prevent the unauthorized access. Uh, next is Punjab National Bank, also called PNB Bank, uh, has implemented adaptive MFA and uh, with a combination of password-based authentication and OTP sent to the customer's mobile device to confirm the identity of its customers and prevent unauthorized access to their accounts. Uh, next one is uh, Canada Bank uh, has also implemented adaptive MFA for its online banking platform uh, again with a combination of a password-based authentication and biometric combination. Let's summarize. Adaptive multi-factor authentication is a highly effective approach to authentication that can significantly increase the security of an organization system and resources. It works by using multiple factors to confirm a user's identity, including something the user knows, something the user has and something the user is. 
the risk level associated with a particular login attempt is determined and used to adjust the authentication requirements, providing an additional layer of security. The benefits of adaptive multi-factor authentication includes increased security and a more convenient user experience. So this is very much important. The whole objective is it increases the security of an organization. It can help prevent unauthorized access to systems and resources by making it more difficult for attackers to gain access. To implement adaptive MFA, organization need to consider the types of authentication factors they want to use, the tools and technologies they need to support and the level of risk they are willing to tolerate. In summary, adaptive MFA is a critical component of a comprehensive security strategy and essential for ensuring the security of an organization's system and resources. That's it in this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check my other videos for more information on cyber securities and other topics. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe to my channel, like and share my videos. See you soon in the next video. Until then, goodbye, take care and keep learning.